Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, as you can tell by that Pokeball sound at the video's intro, today we're going to talk about Pokemon again. Now, if you guys follow me, then you'll know that Pokemon was one of my favorite anime shows when I was young, despite the fact that I don't talk about it as often as I used to. But, since there's going to be a live-action Pokemon movie this May, I want to make this year Poke Crazy by looking at several other Pokemon films that I still enjoy. Now, to start things off, let's talk about how Pokemon were during Generation 2, which was the times of the Johto region. In the past, I blogged two Pokemon films that came from that generation, which were Pokemon 3, Spell of the Unknown, and Pokemon Heroes. To me, Generation 2 was my favorite generation, not only for the Gold, Silver, and Crystal games, but also for Pokemon Stadium 2 and Pokemon Coliseum. Also, during those days, I've been hearing legends about the event-only Mon, Celebi, which was the Mew of Generation 2. Now, since I was still a Pokemon fan back then, I became hyped to see a fourth Pokemon film in theaters if it was announced. And of course, not long after my parents got back from Italy during summer 2002, my cousins showed me a Pokemon website and I discovered that my prayers were answered. But you may be asking, does this fourth Pokemon film still hold up these days? Well, let's find out. Released in Japan on July 7, 2001, and in the United States on October 11, 2002, the movie is Pokemon Forever, Celebi the Voice of the Forest. So, let's get started. Forty years ago, Celebi tries to flee from a vicious, greedy Pokemon hunter. In order to escape, Celebi uses the last of its energy to travel through time and brings along a young trainer named Sammy who had been trying to protect it. In the present day, Ash and friends arrive in the forest and immediately become friends with Celebi and Sammy. Though both recover from their harrowing ordeal, things aren't necessarily getting better. There are still people looking to capture Celebi. This time, it's the evil Iron Mask Marauder, and his plan might just be the cruelest one yet. He's equipped with Dark Balls, which makes any Pokemon it captures mindlessly obedient, evil, and far stronger. Can Ash, Sammy, Misty, and Brock withstand the power of a possessed Celebi and restore it to its true self? Sorry, you'll have to find out for yourself. Because, in my opinion, this was another great Pokemon film. Ever since me and several of my closest friends saw it in theaters when I was young. However, while this movie was successful in Japan... It sadly became a box of his bomb here in America. But over the years, I think this movie did receive a cult following. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, believe it or not, this movie was the first Pokemon film to be produced in America by Miramax. And afterwards, they produced several other Pokemon films up until 2005 with Destiny Deoxys. Norman Grossfeld, the producer of the English adaptation, said that the animation quality in the film was the finest yet, from Oriental Light and Magic. The animators felt tremendous pressure that their adaption, both in the writing and the casting, held up against this incredible achievement. 
Grossfeld says that they adjusted the casting so that the guest characters did not sound too cartoony, and instead had a larger-than-life tone to fit with the epic nature of the story and the craftsmanship of the animation. Speaking of which, the Japanese animation is great, and I think the forest surrounding the Lake of Life is beautiful. But, on the other hand, the forest setting feels almost like most Pokemon episodes I've seen on television. However, there are a few parts where the forest looks like it's in CGI, like the trees, a few branches, even several leaves and a bit of grass. Plus, while we don't see too much of Arborville, I think it was the inspiration for Fortree City from the Hoenn games. Also, I do like the many different Pokémon that live in the forest. For example, there are a few bug types like Weedle, Caterpie, and Spinarak, flying types like Pidgeotto, Pidgey, and Hoot Hoot, grass types like Oddish and Bellossom, and in the lake there are water types like Sea King, Tentacool, Magikarp, Quagsire, Seal, and Starmie. However, since there are too many other Pokemon to mention, the ones who stick out to me the most are Teddy Ursa, Ursaring, Stantler, and Furret. Oh, by the way, the said Furret that guides our heroes to the lake kind of reminds me of one of the mini games from Pokemon Stadium 2. Also, some of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Ash battles a boy named Dundee while Born to be a Winner plays. By the way, this song feels pretty similar to the first Pokemon theme song due to it having similar lyrics. Also, the part that follows the battle is pretty risky when Ash tries to jump onto a boat that's pulling out of the dock. Also, I like the scene where the gang try out some berries, and when they witness a bunch of Metapod evolving into Butterfree, and when they watch a sunrise. However, to me, the saddest part of the movie is when Celebi is dying, only to be followed by a beautiful scene where several Celebi from the future and the past gather together to revive it. Anyway, that's all I have for Mustang Notes, so let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our hero, Ash Ketchum, is once again voiced by the classic Veronica Taylor. In this film, I still think Ash is a great character. Also, I can't believe how many times Ash gets to climb stuff that even I can't climb, like a huge tree or a spider mech. Plus, I think Ash is great at making new friends. However, like in Pokemon Heroes, Ash doesn't use too many of his other Pokemon in this film, aside from using Pikachu and Bayleaf. It makes me wish that Ash could have used his Cyndaquil, or even his Bulbasaur or Totodile. Next we have Ash's best friend and partner, Pikachu, voiced by the legendary Iku Otani. As usual, Pikachu is a wonderful Pokemon, and I think Pikachu is great when it uses its ears to detect something. And I absolutely think it was awesome when he used its Thunderbolt attack to blow up the villain's jetpack. Joining Ash and Pikachu on their quest are Misty and Brock, voiced by Rachel Lillis and Eric Stewart. As everybody knows, they're the former gym leaders of Pewter City and Cerulean City. To me, Brock is a great friend, 
despite the fact that he gets on my nerves when he flirts with a girl like Diana. But I do like the part where he sends out his crowbat to find Ash at the beginning of the film, and when he sends out his onyx to battle an evil Tyranitar. As for Misty, well, I think she's an okay character, and I think her togepi is really adorable. But keep in mind, folks, I don't ship her with Ash. Though, I do like the part where she pulls on Brock's ear. But I did feel bad when Misty twisted her knee. Next, we have the wacky Team Rocket shenanigans. Jesse, James, and Meowth. Voiced by Rachel Lillis, Eric Stewart, and the late Matty Blostein. In this movie, they're up to their usual pranks to try to steal Pikachu. But later on, they do join up with the Iron Mask Marauder due to him being from Team Rocket himself. To me, the funniest scenes involving them is when they try to get a peach from a tree only to have a Pidgeotto get it instead and when Wobbuffet ruins their overused motto by causing them to fall off a branch. Next we come to Professor Oak, voiced by Stuart Zagnet. Now, those of us who grew up with red, blue, and yellow and the Kanto seasons already know that Professor Oak is Pallet Town's Pokemon expert. In this movie, however, Professor Oak tells Ash and the gang about Suicune, plus, spoiler alert, he does get a lot of character development throughout this movie, but I'll explain why later. Next we come to our title Pokemon, Celebi, whose vocals are provided by Kazuko Sujiyama. In this movie, Celebi is known as the voice of the forest. In other words, the spirit who protects it. Also, Celebi has the power to travel through time. In my eyes, I think Celebi is really pretty, playful, and friendly, even though it started out hurt and scared. Also, I like when Celebi uses Leech Seed and Vine Whip to defend itself, and when it uses its psychic energy to give Ash, Pikachu, and Sam the ability to fly. Also, I think its giant tree form looks like how Celebi would look if it could have a mega evolutionary form. Also, I feel it was very intense when Celebi tries to fight the Dog Ball's mind control while Ash and Sammy try to save it. Next up is our second main character, Sammy, voiced by Tara Sands, who, after this movie, voiced Bianca in Pokemon Heroes and Tori in Destiny Deoxys. To me, Sam is a great new friend for Ash and the gang. Also, he's shown to have some skills in Pokemon watching, pretty similar to Tracy, as shown when he draws in his sketchbook the Pokemon that he meets, especially Celebi. After rescuing Celebi from the Pokemon Hunter, he grows a special bond with it. Plus, I just love the part where he draws Pikachu sleeping with Celebi, Plus, I think Sam's Charmeleon is pretty badass. Also, I'm surprised that Sam is actually Professor Oak when he was a boy. In fact, after I saw this movie in theaters, I immediately put two and two together. Because in Pokemon 2000, they do say that Professor Oak's first name is Samuel. So, it pretty much fits. Next up, we have Suicune, whose vocals are provided by Masahiko Tanaka. 
Now, in this movie, unlike its counterpart from I Choose You and the Gold, Silver, and Crystal games, Suicune personifies the North Wind and has the power to purify tainted waters. To me, while Suicune doesn't have a big role in this, I think it's an awesome Pokemon, especially when it uses its Bubble Beam attack against Celebi and Tyranitar. Also, this movie, along with I Choose You, aren't the only time Suicune would appear in a Pokemon movie, because during the Sinnoh generation, Suicune would make an appearance with the other legendary beasts, including Celebi, in Zoroark Master of Illusions. But I'll get to that movie during Mother's Day. Next we meet our first supporting character, Mr. White, voiced by Mark Thompson, who did the four kids voice for Nut from the Winx Club. Now, Mr. White doesn't really appear too much in this movie, but I do like the part where he saves Ash from falling into the river in the beginning of the film, where he tells Ash about the forest near his hometown Arborville, and when he takes the gang there in his boat. Speaking of which, I'm surprised that said boat can fly. Man, I haven't seen something like that since Pokemon 2000. Next we come to Diana, voiced by Roxanne Beck, and her grandmother Toa, also voiced by Veronica Taylor. To me, these two are also great supporting characters. However, I think Toa sticks out more than Diana does. You see, Toa has been guarding the entrance to the forest ever since she was a young girl. She warns anyone who goes in to listen for the voice of the forest and stay still if they hear it. Otherwise, they'll get taken to a different time. I also thought it was very nice of her when she gave Sam a loaf of bread and when she gave Sam back his sketchbook. Last but not least, we have our main villain, the Iron Mask Marauder, voiced by Dan Green. Best known from Yu-Gi-Oh! And who previously voiced Professor Hale and Entei from Pokemon 3. And after this movie, he voiced Damos in Arceus and the Jewel of Life. But, I'll get to this movie this coming Easter. In my opinion, this character is a very vicious member of Team Rocket. And, I think he's even nastier than Jesse and James, Butch and Cassidy, or even Annie and Oakley. His evil plan, which sounds like something from Pokemon Coliseum, is to capture Celebi with a dark ball in order to not only destroy the forest, but to also overthrow his own boss, Giovanni. Also, I think his spider mech is a cool transport contraption, and I think his nastiest moments are when he threatens the hunter at the beginning of the movie, when he crushes Ash's hand with his foot, and when he takes Jesse as a hostage. Also, I think his Scizor and Sneasel are pretty cool Pokemon, but for being evil and, well, far stronger, I think Ash and Sam managed to beat them pretty easily. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Pokemon Forever is another great Pokemon film in my opinion. The Japanese animation is great, as always. Ash, Pikachu, and the rest of the gang are memorable. Jesse, James, and Meow, while still shenanigans, are very wacky characters. Celebi is such an adorable Pokemon, and one that I'd love to make friends with. Suicune was great too, while it didn't really do too much in this movie. The Iron Mask Marauder was very threatening, and finally, Sam was a great character, 
And I think that he and Ash made a great friendship chemistry before he became a Pokemon professor in Pallet Town. Still, I highly recommend you guys to check this movie out if you're a Pokemon fan like I am. And I think your children will love it too. So, I give Pokemon Forever an 88% out of 100. Well, that's all for now, viewers. But I'm not done yet. Join me next time as we take a look at the 21st Pokemon movie. As soon as it comes in my mailbox, that is. Mustang Power.